If you're interested in learning how to make a 610 by 220 millimeter bed for an Ender 3 version 2, check this video out. So let's take a look at how to take an Ender 3 version 2 and extend the bed from the standard uh, 220 millimeter by 220 millimeter to something like uh, 220 millimeter by 610 millimeter. And to be specific, uh, this is a uh, 1 8 sheet of aluminum that is uh, nine inches wide by 24 inches long. And we are going to take this and make it the bed for the Ender 3 version 2. Now, uh, I have already made a few changes. As you can see, I've pulled off most of the parts that we are going to pull off in the future. And I will show you where to put the new parts. But one of the main pieces that we are elongating for this process is the Y-axis here. Uh, the y-axis is now using a piece of 4040 that is 750 millimeters long, 750 millimeters long. And in order to do that, I have used the original bed, as you can see, I put the bed carriage on this, and I have um, the timing belt, which is uh, 1.5 meters, and I basically just connected it here with a couple zip ties to put it on but I've mounted the motor and uh, everything else on it so you can kind of see how it looks. And we're gonna be putting this on to the uh, Ender 3 version two. So to begin, I'm gonna take some 30 millimeter M5 bolts and I'm gonna take some M5 T-slot nuts here and I am going to put them in the bottom to get it ready. So I just suggest that you prep this in advance before you slide it into place. And here, just so you can see it from the other side, I'm getting all the uh, M5 30 millimeter screws, or I should say bolts into place, and putting the uh, T-slot nuts on top. So uh, it's ready to go. And now I can just take the Y-axis and slide it into place. And then I'm just gonna tighten up those bolts and I'm not going to tighten them too tight. I just want to get it into place where I want it because I'm going to have to adjust the spacing uh, once I'm ready to go. Like I said, I've left this uh, a little loose here so we can slide it later. But the next thing I need to do is get ready to put the uh, end stop and motor uh, connected back with the wire here and um, I just I don't know sometimes where this is going to be uh, these are close but may not be close enough to get to where the wire needs to be so I would rather just pull it out and you can pull it out here and down here now don't worry uh, where they connect where they pull out because there's pretty much no other place they could go um, but, uh, let's just get it out. And, uh, my suggestion is to put a replacement wire in there. And I have that right here. I have a one meter, uh, extension wire. And I'm just verifying that it's the four pin on this side that goes in. And I'm just going to push that through. So I'm just going to put it back into place, there's the motor, and up here in the middle is the end stop connector. Okay. So it just occurred to me right now that you may want to have access to the power supply, and the reason for that is to be able to install uh, the heat. Um, this heat pad here is 
22 inches by six inches. So it's just a little smaller than the bed itself, but that will give you access to putting in screws and so forth. We'll talk about that in a second. But uh, this is 110 volts, 650 watts. And at 650 watts, there is no way this uh, power supply rated for 350 watts is gonna handle it unless it is using the direct power uh, from the wall rather than having it be converted, which is why 110 volts will work. Now, in order to use something like this, we're gonna also have to install a uh, solid state relay. So I will show you that in just a second. In retrospect, you may wanna do all of this uh, cable work before you actually put in the uh, Y axis extrusion because it would just be easier to pull this off and access everything so i do apologize for that uh, there's more wiring than i really thought about before uh, generally speaking just to make sure we got this uh, this cable right here which i wired through the back and everything else is pretty much wired that way uh, is what has the end stop which goes uh, right there and the uh, y-axis motor which is right there um, you'll see that I have these two wires here, uh, the, uh, red and the black, and they should be at least, say, 500 millimeters long. Uh, that's what you'll want. Um, these are going to go to the, uh, solid state relay. Uh, you can have them thin like this because they're not going to handle the load that, uh, was handled previously. That's going to happen in the solid state relay. Also, uh, from the, uh, uh, the heat bed, you're going to have wires that are coming off of it. Uh, two for the thermal resistor and uh, two, which are also white but thick, uh, here for the, um, uh, for the power to heat the bed. Uh, so for heating the bed, as you can see, one of them, and it doesn't matter which one, uh, goes into the neutral. Uh, you're also going to want to have about 150 millimeters of uh, something like a, a 16 gauge uh, wire, uh, red preferably, so you know that it is the hot one. This is the one that the power is going through, uh, so uh, you kind of want to make sure that there is no electricity coming in uh, when you're installing this wire or, uh, yeah, you could get severely injured, so please consider that. Um, and then, uh, like I said, uh, everything is going through the back uh, like the previous wire was. And uh, here, as you can see, goes all the way to the second connector here, uh, which is uh, the thermal resistor. Uh, so it can tell uh, what, the, what temperature the bed is. Okay, um, that's all the main wiring. Once you get all this wiring connected, you can pretty much close it back up. Uh, <laughs> I just realized that... I need to rewire this so it goes through the back right here. So everything goes through the back. So I will do that in just a second. Okay. Got all the wiring fixed up here finally. Uh, so everything is pretty set the way I like it. So I'm just going to close this all up again. When putting this uh, back into place, you're definitely going to want to remember uh, where to connect the fan. Which is right here. Okay, and I think we've got everything put together here. So we can uh, set it down and deal with the cables. With the main load going into one, uh, the neutral, which goes to the heat bed, goes into two. And then as you can see, uh, negative four, positive three. And uh, these two use the uh, thin wires here uh, that go onto the motherboard. So we're gonna connect all that right now. Okay, so there you see, I have connected it. Uh, one to the red, two to the heat bed, uh, three and four uh, going to the motherboard. So uh, one thing to note, uh, you never want to touch these, right? You never actually want to go in there and touch this while it's plugged in. So uh, I don't know, I'm going to build a shroud or something so that you can't get access to it but uh, I'm also gonna mount it probably right about here for right now. 
And uh, just in the future, I'm just warning you, uh, yeah, we got to find a way to block that. So, so like I said before, uh, this probably would have been a lot easier if from the start I had done first all of the wiring and then started putting this Y axis in. So let's just pretend we're doing that. We are going to put this in uh, a little later. So uh, the screws are still here and ready to go, but I'm gonna work on the Y axis first. Uh, so all the wiring is done on the Ender 3 version two. And um, now I am going to use these. Uh, these are uh, two foot uh, 15, 15 extrusions. Uh, they've been pre-drilled for three millimeter holes uh, on the ends and right in the middle. And I'm going to mount this using uh, M3 eight millimeter screws here uh, and some shims to keep them from dropping through the holes. And basically uh, the nut here, this little, this little nut uh, slides in like so and then it, it screws into place. So I'm gonna mount these and I'm gonna tell you what the measurements are when I'm done, uh, but I gotta mount them right now. Okay, so the spacing here was uh, 210 millimeters. So 210 millimeters, 210 millimeters, and then on the other two sides. Um, the next thing you're gonna need to consider is where these holes are. Um, should have talked about this before, but before this was uh, put on, I had actually, already uh, mounted these and then drilled holes in the uh, 24 inch by nine inch piece of aluminum here uh, that were tapered. I tapered them as you can see uh, in order to make sure that it aligned properly with the holes there. So I basically uh, did not have this mounted, put it underneath and then uh, used the holes that were already in the 1515 to get proper placement. So I do apologize, I didn't talk about that before. Um, <laughs> hope you watch this video first before you start working on this whole project. Um, but I definitely recommend you do that to get the holes placement correct. And then uh, that being said, uh, these holes were meant for M3 screws. Now you could open these up and use your original bed leveling equipment which uses M4 screws, but I wanted to switch them out. But unfortunately I ended up getting uh, 40 millimeter uh, uh, M3 screws here when I should have got 60. So I just want to show you what it's going to look like uh, mounted everything um, but uh, basically I have six points uh, to place this uh, on and I'm going to uh, mount it for you right now. So uh, there you go that's what it's going to look like. Um, I, I don't have like I said it is just not long enough to uh, put uh, the bed leveling knobs at the bottom. So I'm waiting for my uh, M3 60 millimeter screws to make that happen. And then I'll be able to put them uh, on three points on one side and three points on the other. Uh, also, there's exactly enough space between uh, the screws to put on using the uh, 3M tape, the uh, heat bed underneath. I'm not gonna do that right now. And here's a quick look at what the bottom would be like if uh, the screws were properly aligned and everything. Like I said, these are too small, they're 40 millimeter. Um, 50 millimeter would probably work, but I'm gonna get 60 millimeter just to be on the safe side here. Um, and uh, as you can see, I'm also uh, putting the motor plug and the uh, plug for the end stop in place. I'm gonna mount that right now. Okay, and the measurement I am getting is 296 uh, all the way to the very end uh, past uh, the part on the end here. So uh, 296 uh, up to just the, uh, the metal, the 4040 metal, that would be 292. But uh, add, uh, add the four millimeters and that's uh, 296. One quick thought I had is that um, the solid state relay maybe could be mounted underneath. Uh, I'm just worried about, as you can see, that, that wire right there. Uh, easy for someone to 
touch and uh, get hurt. So uh, still having a mount around this, but putting it underneath here uh, would be a great place for it. So that's about it. Uh, as you can see, this is the way I want to place this on shelving with the screen set up with maybe a right angle mount right here so I can control things from this side. Uh, I will uh, put this on to the uh, bed as soon as I get the right screws and I need to make sure that the screws slide through there with no problem. I'm beginning to think 60 millimeters is not going to work. Either uh, 50 or 55. Still working that out. Um, also uh, as you can see, it, it, it does go fairly long all the way to the end like that. Uh, so uh, these these uh, wires will have to be wrapped in the back. But uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good here. So again, it's a work in progress. I'm going to 3D print a few extra parts here to uh, close up some areas. But do let me know what you think. Until later, I've got a placeholder here at projectender.com where I plan to show this video as well as parts available to do all of this. Um, but yeah, Project Ender, check it out. Thanks for watching.